Well, happy Friday Eve to you. Thank you for making us your home this afternoon. I'm Journey Taylor. We want to head straight over to the weather department where we have meteorologist Nathan Scott and Nathan. These clouds are telling it all. We have some light rain moving in, right? Good afternoon, Journey. As expected, I mm -hmm. told you we would likely see rain moving in central Arkansas right around noon, and that certainly is the case, and this is very light rain for the most part. There's no heavy downpours. There's no lightning or thunder with this, and that's just because we're seeing the moisture get robbed from more significant storms down into Louisiana. But the rain moving into Saline County, Pulaski County, this is all lifting its way off to the northeast, and I talked about all those showers and storms into Louisiana. There you see it, and that's preventing a lot of moisture to move here into Arkansas. Temperatures out there right now, primarily into the 70s, lots of clouds all across the natural state. We may see a little bit of sunshine later this afternoon. Here's what the model has, and this coverage may be overdoing it. I think we're going to see less coverage than what you're seeing here, but we'll hang on to that chance of scattered light rain, maybe even a few thunderstorms that try to bubble up for the daytime heating, and that could continue into this evening as well. Temperatures today primarily staying into the 70s. If we see a few peaks of sun, we may reach 80 degrees. Shower and thunderstorm chances, they stick around all the way through the weekend. I'll have that forecast coming up. Efforts from a county judge to get what he wants has backfired after Jefferson County employees pushed back against an attempt to withhold their paychecks. Hundreds of employees did not get paid on time, thanks to County Judge Gerald Robinson, who refused signing payroll, all because of two employees he feels should not get paid. But when the clock struck 9 a.m. yesterday and payroll still had not been signed, employees decided to walk off the job. Because that's unfair for all of these employees, including myself, to be working and not to be paid. Now he didn't give us our checks. We need our checks. Officers were left half empty as a result of walking out. That's when the judge decided it was finally time to pay people their hard earned money. Shortly after releasing payroll, Robinson was handed a lawsuit in response to what he's done. I'm used to getting and seeing lawsuits. If I don't see it from the sheriff's office, uh, uh, I'll see it from somewhere else. Well, our team reached out to the county attorney to see what's being done to stop this from happening again but he chose not to comment. Well, across the state, law enforcement is seeing a terrifying trend of more people coming up missing and say it's something that has no easy fix. As cases start to pile up, the responsibility falls on investigators to find answers. According to the Criminal Investigation Division under state police, there's a lot that goes into a missing person's case if it's slowing them down from trying to get to the bottom of things are license plate readers, you know, the state, that those are huge going on in the state right now to be able to track a vehicle license plate. A reminder, there is no waiting period for reporting a missing person. Officials say the sooner you do that, the better it is for them to get to work. We now want to turn to an ongoing investigation regarding a shooting that halted traffic for hours on I-630 Tuesday evening. Authorities confirming the shooting is not random or an act of road rage. According to state police, witnesses saw a Dodge Durango pull alongside a Honda Accord. That's when they started firing off shots. Police say three people were struck and later taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. Right now, no arrests have been made, but when and if we know more, so will you. Arkansas Attorney General Tim Griffin is siding with 21 other states in a lawsuit against the ATF as well as the White House. The lawsuit censors around what officials refer to as the gun show loophole. You may remember last month when the White House sent out its new requirements for gun sales, cracking down on who can buy and sell online at gun shows. But according to A.G. Griffin, the Biden administration is going about it all the wrong way. On many items uh, in many areas, they have to go through Congress to change the law. The lawsuit comes as the ATF deals with continued scrutiny over the shooting death of Brian Malinkowski. His family lawyer shared a statement regarding the lawsuit calling on Congress to get a better grip on private gun sales.
Intense protests continue to take place on college campuses around the country. But as the days go on, those schools are actively working with police to get things under control. At Columbia University, officials cleared tents as the request at the request of schools, eventually removing protesters from an academic building on campus. Classes were canceled for students attending UCLA after violence broke out caused by a clash between pro-Palestinians and counter protesters. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, federal lawmakers are laying the foundation to reduce discrimination in schools. The U.S. House passed a bill that would further define anti-Semitism and hopes to push the Department of Education efforts to crack down on equality. The bill now heads the Senate to decide if it will reach the president's desk. The fight for reproductive rights is yet again taking center stage. A move from Arizona's legislature could repeal a near total ban on abortion statewide. Janet Semlian shares more from the heated session. By your votes of 16 ayes, 14 nays, you have passed House Bill 2677. After a heated As session the in the Arizona Senate. Capitol, the state's Republican-controlled Senate I, narrowly I voted to repeal an 1864 law that bans almost all abortions. Two Republican senators joined 14 Democrats to reverse the law after the repeal barely cleared the state house last week. It's now headed to Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs' desk, who said she'll sign it. The Civil War era law predates Arizona's statehood. It bans all abortions except if the mother's life is in danger and could allow the state to prosecute abortion providers. The decision divided voters in the battleground state. It's a victory for women. It's a victory for the Constitution. The repeal allows the state's 15-week abortion limit, enacted before Roe v. Wade was overturned, to remain state law. We still have a road ahead of us. Even if signed today, the repeal will not take effect until 90 days after the legislative session ends. With the near total ban set to take effect June 27th, there will likely be a near total ban on abortions in Arizona for a period of weeks or months this summer. The thing that I worry about most is what are we going to do in that gap time um, when abortion is going to be illegal in Arizona. Janet Shamley and CBS News, Phoenix. Back at home, state lawmakers meeting public demand and addressing a problem head on by passing two bills that regulate the crypto mining industry, an issue we've followed since residents first complain about noisy crypto facilities in their neighborhoods. Lawmakers hearing those demands and have sent two bills through state Congress, one limiting foreign ownership of crypto data mines and the other restoring state and local insight over the noisy plants. The only thing left to do now is for Governor Sanders to sign them into law. It will soon be time for folks to pay their dues and there's a possibility just you just might be paying more for taxes. But today city leaders are inviting you to join the conversation. Lawmakers have been trying to raise the sales tax for quite some time now. According to the mayor, it's something the city needs to keep things intact. And last year officials realized the increase would come out to $60 million a year. They're planning their first public meeting today to hopefully give people some much needed answers. We've learned some new things. Here is uh, some new additions and some subtractions to the proposal that you saw in the summer of 23. Uh, so we want to show that uh, we don't have these meetings just to have the meeting uh, and come back and share that we listen to the feedback uh, to have a better proposal for them to consider this coming November. The first meeting happens tonight at six over at Trinity Presbyterian Church in West Little Rock. Something else happening today for fruit lovers. It's the start of this year's Cabbage Strawberry Festival. If you want to get in on the activities, it all begins tonight at 6 and will last through Saturday. It's one of the biggest fundraisers for the city's Junior Auxiliary Club. Being one with nature can help you in more ways than you may think. Coming up, just how beneficial being outside really is. And if you're going to be outside over the next few hours, take the rain gear because we do have some rain making its way through. We'll have the chance of more scattered showers and storms, not only for today, but this is going to stick around. An unsettled weather pattern is setting up. I'll have more on timing and also talk about the severe weather potential next.